from somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. How is this possible, man? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And I am uh, looking at a story here. This is from the Sydney Morning Herald in Sydney, Australia. And uh, basically, it's mostly about Americans. Says here, in the news recently for the world to see, the highly successful wife of New York Governor Elliot Spitzer stood by his side, silent, eyes downcast, as he confessed his involvement in a sex scandal and resigned from office. Since then, Silda Spitza, a Harvard-educated former Wall Street attorney, has been under scrutiny. Why did she support the two-timer? Debbie Hargrave, who lives in Concord, California, and has been married for four years, said... If my husband cheated on me, I'd tell him to carry on without me. Her mother-in-law went through with it and got a divorce. But Hargrave felt that Versilda Spitzer, she said, she had to stand by it. It's his career. It's her bread. The Spitzers are the latest in a chain of publicized indiscretions where the wife not only stays put, but stands by her man from Hillary Clinton to Kathy Lee Gifford. There's a name we haven't heard in a while. They're still talking about her down under? Jeez. Maybe they're still rerunning Regis and Kathy Lee down there. Anyway, it says here, public or not, what motivates someone to stay after his or her spouse has an affair? Can I jump in here? Laziness. Laziness. That's all it is. If you're not getting married for the monogamy, what are you there for? Says here in her 25 years of research and consulting on extramarital affairs. She probably talks to her friends on the phone. That's her research, in my opinion. DearPeggy.com's Peggy Vaughn says as much as 70% of people stay in the marriage after infidelity. She says, most people think all infidelity leads to divorce, but frequently the couple just keeps it quiet. The common yet judgmental question, why did she stay, implies that she shouldn't, Vaughn says. You damn straight it does. She says it's an extra burden for all the women who stay to have to defend themselves to their family and friends. When somebody tells you, if it were me, I'd... You can ignore the rest of the sentence because they aren't you. She cautions couples from seeking divorce right away. The people who get out right away second-guess themselves the rest of their lives, says Vaughn, founder of the Beyond Affairs Network and the author of eight books, including The Monogamy Myth. Vaughn and other experts say the reasons people stay say a lot about gender differences and how we approach relationships. From a young age, women are taught to value relationships, says Ray Campton, an ordained minister and marriage and family therapist from Berkeley, California. Men, he says, are trained to be lone wolves. A woman may say, my pride and principle demand that I leave you. 
but I'm going to this divine place, and I'm going to forgive you and stay, Captain says. That said, women stay for the usual reasons, Fawn says. If they are stay-at-home moms or make less money than their husbands, they stay for security and the well-being of their children. They also stay for the same reason Hillary said she stayed with Bill. She still loved him. I was able to recognize his other qualities, Vaughn says. By the way, does anybody believe that? Let me ask, I have to put this in the, like Jeopardy, I've put this in the form of a question because if I said it as a statement, probably get sued. So let's just say this. How many people believe that about Bill and Hillary Clinton? That Hillary Clinton stayed because she loved him and was able to recognize his other qualities? How many believe that? Okay. Now, how many believe that Hillary's a lesbian and Bill's a womanizer and this is a marriage of convenience? And that's why she was able to live through the Monica Lewinsky thing because the only thing she was jealous about is that she wanted Monica Lewinsky for herself. How many believe that? See? A lot of people. It was in the form of a question, Art. You don't have to worry about it. Come on. Says here, uh, women are more able to see past the affair and not filter everything about the man through it, Fawn says. For men, sex is such a critical thing. The affair diminishes their opinion of their wives. And it goes beyond that. Most men who are married are paying most of the bills. I will give you an example. When I was married and I was a victim of an affair, I made six times as much money as my wife. She was struggling to get ahead in a career. I was funding her career. I was helping her pay the costs of working her way up in her career. I helped her get her jobs. I helped her make her way up through her business. I advised her in the early years of her career every step of the way. So when she had an affair, it was more than just having sex with somebody else. It was saying, I don't appreciate anything you did for me. Anything. Anything at all. I don't care what you did. I don't care what, what we accomplished together. Uh, I have the right to do whatever I want, and I'm doing it, and screw you. you damn straight I wasn't happy about that. And I had no interest in staying around it either. Nope. Says here, Vaughn says 40% of her telephone consulting is with men who are victims of their wives' infidelity. People just assume that a man will flee, she says, but they don't. Really? And when they stay, they can have a much harder time dealing with it. In fact, her research indicates that suicidal tendencies following infidelity are higher among male victims than women. Perhaps that's because men tend to view the world in more rigid constructs, said Scott Holtzman, a Brown University psychiatry professor and author of The Secrets of Happily Married Men. He says they're really passionate about rules and agreements. In the past two years, Holtzman has seen more cases of female infidelity than male infidelity in his private practice. Unbelievable. Uh, look, I, I could read you this whole story, but what's the point of going through the entire article? The bottom line here is this. I don't really have an interest in getting married. And the last couple of times I got married, my arm was twisted. I was pushed. And when I was pushed, you know, of course, I said, here, let's get a prenup at least, okay, so I don't feel like I'm going to lose anything, and, and then I'll believe that you're marrying me for the right reasons, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, if you're not planning on being monogamous, what is the point of being married in the first place? And uh, you know what? If a marriage is that much work, if I have to go to the therapist, go to the counselor, if we have to talk, if we have to have rules, if I have to compromise... What is the point? If you screw somebody else, get out, you whore. Get out. I don't care if there's kids involved. I don't care what's involved. If she screws somebody else, she should have thought of that first. Am I wrong? Yeah. 
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The advice you give us is worth more than money. It's worth my weight in gold. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 talk that is our telephone number. It's Pat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Great. Uh, well, basically, I was uh, just calling with the story. Of, I'm still married now. Uh, a few years ago, my wife was uh, unfaithful because uh, I was producing an album for a rapper because I'm a music producer. And... Uh, you know, and she was day, unfaithful because you were producing an album. I was, no, I was producing an album uh, for this rapper, and she was—I don't know why she decided to do this, but she decided to take off one day with the car, and uh, she didn't tell me where she's going or anything. A few days later, shows back up, but uh, so she something happened between her and uh, and the, the rapper, and uh, a few days later, my father died, and uh, at the time. I couldn't think clearly enough to uh, make the decision to get out. But anyway, what ended up happening to that that rapper guy is uh, he was running from the police shortly after that, and uh, he ended up falling down and getting paralyzed off of a fence. And uh, now he's in jail. Come on, this is this is a prank call, right? You're not serious. No, I'm dead serious. I'm so, dead serious. So the rapper was climbing over a fence and he got paralyzed. He's, he's trying to get away from the police, and he fell off of a fence, and he's trying to hop over it. And now he's in a wheelchair. Right. And what is your question? Oh, I was just uh, I was just calling to tell you my story. And, uh, All right, so he's in a wheelchair. So then what happened? Well, basically now, you know, it sort of ruined our marriage, and... Uh, 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 now I'm always wondering if my wife's unfaithful now because... Uh, what do you mean you're wondering? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean? Yeah, is she still there? Yes. That's because you're a complete doormat. You're a pussy. I know that. Absolutely. Why are you such a pussy? Oh, man, I, I don't know. It's probably lack of uh, respect for myself, I would imagine. Right. It probably is. Because I know I have no respect for you. Oh, I know. I, I don't know why you either. would. Right, exactly. So That must be a great marriage you got there, pal. Oh, it's wonderful, believe me. <laughs> and um, I'll bet you've got kids, too. We put one up for adoption. What? We put, she she was also pregnant uh, around that time. I was wondering if it was going to be mine. She refused to have an abortion and uh, ended up, I stayed with her because uh, she said she was going to put it up for adoption, but I didn't want to take the chance. So she ended up actually doing that. But the kid was mine. And so where's the kid now? Oh, uh, Living, living elsewhere, the, you know, is adopted. Uh, it's another part of the state. So you gave your kid up for adoption, right? Because I never wanted kids to begin with. Okay. And you stayed with a woman who did that, right? Boy, oh boy, you're pathetic. I know. <laughs> and and you wanted to call in and let the world know how pathetic you are. Is that was the idea of this call? Uh, uh, the, the idea is actually just be careful. You never know. Uh, you never trust a woman ever, no matter what. Well, I don't, but the, uh, but by the way, there's a woman who has the key to your house. I know. And your last name. I know. Oh, and who are you to tell people not to trust women? <laughs> yeah, don't trust women or you'll end up like me. Right. By the way, how'd the album do? I'm sorry? How'd the album do? Oh, <laughs> not too well because he wasn't around to, to uh, promote it, do anything. It sold well while he was he out. Wasn't, he yeah. wasn't able to go to venues and didn't have a ramp. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's kind of tough to promote an album. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, but, That's, uh, anyways, that, that uh, is the way he rolls, Gary. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, what did he play the telephone circuit now? What's he doing? Oh, he's in jail still. Oh, he's in jail. 
Yeah. Well, that also would make it hard to promote uh, an album. Oh, I would imagine. Of course, he's got street cred for the next uh, next big CD. Are you producing <laughs> that, too? No way. Oh, no, no, of course I, I cut him off. and uh, You cut him yeah. off? Oh, of course. Well, come on. Hire the handicapped. <laughs> oh, man. No, no, so he's paralyzed in a wheelchair. Is he going to find another line of work when he comes out, or what's the deal? I don't know. I, I know he won't be with my wife again, though, because, uh, you know, we don't have a uh, – our, our place isn't really wheelchair accessible, so. <laughs> and you're going to see to it that it never is. <laughs> Absolutely. You were wondering why your wife was having those railings installed in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, now I know. <laughs> that's right. Yep. I'll tell you what, if she installs that toilet seat that's like four inches off the toilet, yep. and I, I I'd be suspicious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, he can, he can get some, uh, if he ever puts on a rap video, he can put some uh, spinners, some bling spinners on his uh, wheelchair there. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yep. Well, uh, all I know is if it comes to the Crips or the Bloods, we know which side he's on. <laughs> oh, man. Can you take me out with uh, a bong hit and a screaming orgasm? I certainly can. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with the taste of what I just said. Sorry. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Liz on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. This is Alice. I know. I just said that. I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, you were talking about um, how women stay with their friends when they cheat. And that just happened to me. Um, I, stay with my, I stay with my husband. Why? Because. Um, well, of course, the first reaction is I want to get divorced right away and just get separated. Of course, he tries to fix everything and stay. So that kind of gave me to think, by the way, I love your show. I listen to it, like, for the past three years. I never disagree with you. I kind of regret getting married. And, um, yeah, and everybody who's listening, please don't get married. <laughs> so if you regret being married... Yeah. And he cheated on you. Yes. Why you stay? Okay, I'm staying because I'm a um, stay-at-home mom. I have two kids. Um, he cheated on me. I found out when I was three, four months pregnant. And um, the first time or the second time? The, no, the second time. I made him have a vasectomy right away because now I'm staying with him. And so, so your, your attitude about it is if he screws around again, you don't want him knocking up anybody else. No knock me down. I don't want to have no more kids. Ah. Actually, I didn't even want to have my last baby. Because he cheated on you? No, because I didn't even know by then he cheated on me. The reason I'm staying with him is because, like you said, I don't want my kids to be messed up in the future. So yeah. you think that by staying uh, with a cheater, yeah. somebody who, uh, you know, takes advantage of you, hurts you, you think that's good for the kids? Not really good for the kids. Actually, if, um, if we split, he has to pay for two households. It'll be less money. He doesn't make as much. He makes 60 a year, so he's not as much. Whatever I'll be working, you know, we're going to be splitting their money. And you couldn't tell what kind of guy he was? No. Come on. No, he was actually the best guy I ever dated, and I dated a lot before I married Right. Uh, but, uh, darling, uh, you, only, you were only 22 when you got married, which is a little young. Yes, and I was pretty stupid, and I'm still stupid. I regretted it forever. And you know he's going to cheat on you again. Of course he did. Oh, he already did. Yes. But now my question so is... So now, now what you've decided to do is you've decided to stay in an open marriage. Well, actually, I never talked to nobody about this. Nobody. I, I don't even cause arguments between us. Because I don't want both of us to be miserable fighting or anything. I kind of think... Why would he be miserable? He can get it whenever he needs it. Oh, yeah, I know. But if he has a miserable wife always calling him cheater and making a big deal, 
then it'll be like... Well, if you're going to live in an open marriage, why make a big deal about it? Well, well my question is, if I get separated, he's going to have to pay child support on me. What do you think about that? Well, he's already paying child support. Who's buying the groceries? Yes. Who's paying the rent? Oh, he is. Yeah, who's paying the utilities? Well, I won't be able to make it all by myself. Uh, darling, I, I understand what you're saying, but, um, I do believe that the, what you're doing, uh, staying around in a situation like this with kids who are going to be old enough to understand what's going on, it's not good for them. I know. I know. And by the way, the time you caught him cheating on you was not the first time he cheated on you. Yeah, of course. So that means that your judgment was bad. And that's why I say you got married at 22. You knew even less than you thought you knew. Yeah, of course. Because this is the kind of person you married. Yeah. How old was he when you got married? Uh, 22. Yeah, he was too young to get married. Hadn't been with enough people. Hadn't had enough experiences. Well, he did. He... No, he didn't. Because if he did, he wouldn't be doing it now. I know, and they were too ugly. They, I don't understand. They were ugly girls. Darling, it has nothing to do with whether they're ugly. It has to do with they'll do things you won't do. Okay. So am I a bad person for divorcing him and asking for child support? No. Well, I mean, you don't have to ask for child support. It will be assigned to you. Okay. And that's the law. Okay. So should I just force him? Well, darling, I mean, you have to do what's good for you. But why would you choose to stay? You're selling the other guy, the other doormat who called in. Why would you choose to stay? I guess I wanted my kids to be growing in a, you know, healthy environment. Which it's matters. not a healthy environment. Your husband has sex with whoever comes along. I know, but they don't That's know. That's not a healthy environment. They don't know. Because... They don't see a fight, you know? I just don't want them to grow up to be, you know, divorced. So you want them to grow up to be doormats like their mom? What? You want them to grow up to be doormats like their mother? What is doormat? Like somebody who gets their feet wiped on all the time. You know, when you're at the front door, there's that little thing down there that says welcome on it. You wipe your feet on it when you walk in the door. It's called a doormat. And and I'm saying that that's what he's doing to you. He's wiping his feet on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's that's what the kind of kids you want to raise. We're going to be like that. But see, he does not treat me. I know I'm not justifying anything. He does not treat me bad in front of me. Kids face. are not stupid. Mm-hmm. They're not stupid. Are your children stupid? No. So do you think they can't sense what's in the air at your house? They don't see nothing. So you think they're stupid? No, just because they don't see anything doesn't mean that they're stupid. Mm -hmm. See, they don't see fights. They don't see... They don't have to. They don't see him treating me crap. Uh, I, you know, my, my parents tried to do the same exact thing. But you think I couldn't hear them arguing down the hall when they thought I was sleeping? Yeah. You think I couldn't tell the tension in the air when my father didn't show up one time for three nights in a row and then came home with flowers? Yeah. How how stupid does one have to be? Children are smart. Yeah. They're not stupid. This whole thing is predicated on the idea that you think your kids are too stupid to know what's going on. Yeah, you're right. They're not stupid. Children know the truth. They tell the truth. How old are your kids? Um, one, four, the oldest one's four, and the youngest one is eight months. Have you ever seen a kid walk up to an old lady and say, God, you're old. Yeah. You're fat. Yeah. You're bald. Ever yeah. seen kids do that? Yeah. Yeah. Kids are smart. They don't have, uh, they don't regulate their emotions or their feelings, but they're smart. You think your kids are so stupid that they can't sense that there's a problem. Yep. 
Yeah, and you know what? Another reason it keeps me staying with him is my parents. They're very old-fashioned. If I divorce him, they probably... What country are your parents from? Uh, Mexico. Okay. And so what you're telling me is that they're trying to tell you that in Mexico, you stay with your husband no matter what. Well, they don't try to tell me. Just I don't get divorced no matter what. The old-fashioned. If I do, they'll be really mad at me. They're old, and they'll probably have a heart attack, and they'll be freaking out. I, have, I mean, that's one of my least problems. My first is my kids. That's my so your parents think it's perfectly okay for your husband to go out and screw other women? Well, that's how my dad and my mom, that's what happened. That's why I never believe in getting married. Does that mean you you never believe in getting married? But you did it! I did it. I know, because I'm stupid. I'm really, really stupid. Were and you knocked up when you got uh, no, when you got married? No, I didn't. No, I wasn't. You were just you. Your parents were probably pushing you to do it, right? Yes. Yeah, I was. Come on! When am I gonna have grandchildren? Come on! I know. And you did it. Yep. Now look what you have. Mm-hmm. Hang on a second, Linda. What did you want to say to Liz? I want to tell Liz that she is not an example for her children she is worthless good for nothing stay at home sit on her butt she needs to go out there and get an education and show her children what it really is to be a parent and how to be in a healthy home her they're living having her children watch what she's going through i don't know how old they are but as they get older they're going to have no respect for her just like her husband has no respect for her i mean this is ridiculous who cares what your parents think and who i mean how could your parents want your your uh, husband i mean their their daughter to want to be with a man that is having an affair and like tom said she he's been having an affair for a long time and why not when he can do whatever the heck he wants and have his sweet little wife non-complaining wife sit at home and babysit because he's sure he's sure, you know i mean he's getting every the best of of everything well she sits at home and gets taken advantage of you need to get off your butt go to school get an education get a job and take care of your kids and be self-sufficient believe me if, he, if you were to divorce him you'd be doing him a favor anyway i mean this either way he's going to get a freebie and well, first of even all, if you were to if you were to divorce him, he'd be paying a lot less now. Like Tom said, he's already paying child support. I mean, you're a you're a bad example as a parent. That's all I have to say. Well, first of all, I'm not lazy. I have an associate's degree, and I also well, why don't you use it? I also um, stay home most of the time. My oldest son is autistic. By the I way, have, by the way, an associate's degree is not a college degree. That's that means you spend two years in the thirteenth grade. Then. I mean, I have some education, and then you wasted because your then time. I got married, I stopped, and then I got pregnant. Now, my son's autistic. I have to stay home most of the time, have, have to attend to IEP meetings all the time, therapy over therapy over therapy, you know, and that's kind of... Therapy for what? For um, my son's autistic. Your son is autistic on top of all that. Yeah. Oh my God. So I have to continue to be busy. That's why I really don't even put in my head. I don't even think about what happened, the cheating in my head, because I'm way too busy thinking. I'm not lazy. I keep doing it, and believe me, every time I have a chance, I take some classes to go back to school. Are any of your children female? Yeah, the youngest one is a little girl. Is that the example that you want to set out there for your daughter? Not. Of course To let not. a man take advantage of her like that? Not. I'm sure your parents don't want you to be taken advantage Liz of Liz thinks like her that. kids are too stupid to know what's going on. Oh, no. Kids are smart. They know everything. I mean, you don't ever put it past a child that they don't know what's going on. Believe me, they know. You know, I lived with a parent that was um, that was a cheater, and my put up with it, and I... And for a long time, I I had a, I mean, I hated that I hated that part about her. You know, yeah, people are old fashioned, but nobody should be taking advantage of you as a woman. You should have more more self respect, and you should also be lead, giving an example for your daughter. Yeah, I understand. You need to you need to wake up, honey. I mean, this is two thousand eight. I know. I understand. I and, never and even get a job because, and do what you have to do. You know what? There's, 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 there's help out there for your one autistic, autistic child. Too. Child care. I you know, free you place, did. things I like was that. Exactly the same way. Believe me. But then I, you're in this situation and you don't see further. I'm thinking if I go back to work, then I'll be less spending time with my kid. My kid won't. You know. 
Well, let Looking me tell you, you're not doing your kids any favors. Is. Being at home with a man that is cheating on you and, and disrespecting you like that, mm-hmm. you know, just like Tom said, I mean, he, he, has, he has it easy. You know, he has his wife at home, you know, la señora en la casa, uh, yeah. <laughs> taking care of his kids, his babysitter, living babysitter, living maid, living sex toy, living everything. I believe you. Know? I and, don't know. And if I you need to have wake my up. oldest son, believe me, there will be no problem walking away. Most no, I mean, there's help out there for you. You need to, I mean, you need to open your eyes, and and as much as you say you love your children, you need to get up and wake up and do something about it. Don't wait till you're like my mother in her 50s or 60s, and, and then, you know, there's nowhere for you to go from there. Why, why even bother? You're an old woman. Nobody's going to want you at that age. Right now, you're still young. You're still vibrant. You still have energy. Get up. Wake up and do something for your, if you love your children, and you, you need to love yourself. That's obvious that you don't. But you need to learn how to love. Hey, oh, hey we're on the air. No, you can't. Sorry. And Come on, you knew you, you couldn't need save to Get it. your stuff together, and you know, get away from that venomous man. He's only taking advantage of you because you're allowing it. I mean, what man wouldn't? Well, man wouldn't want that. Oh, that means me going back to work, spending less time with my kids. Well, so, you know what? You want is that more important than your kids? My kids are more important than their me. future. Their future. You know I, mean, I know I'm a young. man out there that you know. I don't care about I mean, having men no more. Man, it's gone. No, over there's a, you don't even need to worry about a man. Do you love your kids? I love my kids more than and I love do. Them. Something about it. Don't stay with this man. Men, you know that your daughter is going to see you, and yeah, she's going to see right. how much your husband is disrespecting you. Because, like Tom said, kids are smart they know what's going on and they will do what their parents do exactly they will your daughter exactly you will do. take up with guys like that when she starts dating just right. like you did that's right and she'll be just like mommy is that what you want for your daughter i think not no i think not you know no i you know what, Tom? I love your show. Thank you for everything. I never thought I would ever call, but I never talked to nobody about this. I kind of feel more relieved, and um, thank you. And you know what? You guys are right. So are, what are you going to do? Um, I'm talking to my parents, letting them know what's happening first, then go on with my life without him. Will you keep in touch with us, Liz, and let us know what happens? What? Will you keep in touch with us and let us know what happens? Of course, Tom. I love your show. And you know what? I just hope you stay on the show forever. I want my kids to listen to you. And, um, you know, first of all, my daughter, too. It's the best show. You know, I'm always listening to you every I mean, since I started listening for the first time, ever since then, I make sure I turn it on in the evenings. I love that. All right, all right, Liz. Well, good luck. I know you got a rough road ahead of you, but uh, keep in touch with us and let us know what happened. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. It's ridiculous. It's like you're some sort of god or something, and you've got your own little Bible going on. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the dating game. No, it's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> hey, it's just when you hear that phrase from Hollywood, that's that's what I think. Yeah. 1-800-5800-TOM. We're talking about these chicks like Silda Spitza. Stand by their man when the guy is clearly screwed around. What the hell is going on? Yvette on the Tom Likas yes, show. I have a whole different take on this here. What if you know your man is screwing around, but he can't do it without you? He can't make ends meet. He just can't live without you. What That's you not do? your problem. Right, but, but you still want to be classified as one of these women that you're always talking about, heartless, ruthless. What do you do? Well, but first of all, there's nothing ruthless about leaving somebody who disrespects you. Right, right, especially when there's kids in the picture. I understand all that, but then you feel bad for the person, don't you? No, I mean, 
No, I don't feel bad for a loser who on top of that is a cheater. No. So you think just go ahead and just say that's it, it's over. Done. But but then don't you think where will they go? That's not your problem. But I have kids with them. So? I don't want them to think their mom's a wicked witch that just threw their father well, out. Well, you could you could tell the kids the truth. How old are your kids? Wow, 13, 11, and 9. Great. You need to have an honest conversation with them. And you need to tell them exactly what they're old enough to understand this. And you think it's, well, it's the best thing to do then, right? Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you talk to them and tell them, look, kids, I'm going to make the final decision, but I want to let you in on what's going on. So they feel at least like they were consulted. Okay. All right. Because I was feeling really guilty thinking I should stay in here, but I'm miserable. No, I don't think so. And I don't know. The part of like, that other woman was saying that you'll get too old for another man, <laughs> that don't, that's, that's a non-issue. I think. But uh, anyway, thank well, you very much. Doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter who he was doing it with. How, by the way, how would you catch him? Uh, just too many stupid things, too many stupid little things along the way. And he got a webcam and he'd stay out late and he changed the bank account and he got his own cell phone. And it was just ridiculous. Also, given the fact that, you know, I, I'm, I was just too busy with the kids and everything going on. And, and that's fine. He went where he could get what I didn't want to give him. Uh, why why didn't problem. you want to give it to him, by the way? Oh, well, just because that's not something I'm interested in anymore. So, that's it. Well, darling. <laughs> well, it's just something that is not, I'm just more interested in raising my kids. Well, that, you but that, you see, you're exactly the kind of woman I tell guys to avoid. It's like, why would a man want to become a, a sperm donor and your human wallet, and then uh, once you get what you need, you wait, don't need us anymore? Wait, human wallet? No, it's the other way around. I'm not going to be asking for anything. Not even child support. But why didn't you just, you know, you should have just gone to, like, a fertility clinic. Why Why did you get married to a guy like this? And uh, now you don't want to have sex with him anymore? With any? No, no, no more. I, How I did, did, is this what your mother taught you? Is what you have your kids? You don't need to give your husband sex anymore? Is that where you learned that? Actually, you know where I heard that? On Oprah's doctor, Dr. Oz. That figures. for women to use it that, as a tool. That figures. That uh, now I know uh, again. It's uh, confirmed again why I hate that Oprah Doctor Phil Axis. No, that's no, exactly that, that, that is cool. exactly the kind of crap I'm talking about. <laughs> well, but no, you know everything has its, its its beginning and its end. Everything comes to an end, and you know then you just have to know what to do when it comes to an end. Yeah, but I think. But but, but wait a minute. Uh, this is not an option. What do you mean? I mean, when when you get married, you're committing to servicing the other person. That's that's one of the things you're committing to. Yeah, you know, like all good cars, after a few years, you gotta trade it in. Get your open door model. But and, but and, but and you and didn't do that. The Saudis are really really smart because what they have one two three wives, so you have another wife, and then you let the other one. But you didn't do that. You stayed. You stayed there. Oh, I know. No I wonder know he I cheated did. on you. You know what? You got exactly what you deserved. All you got was a little uh, blow to your ego, but what do you expect to do? Sit there and tolerate that? No. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. You're out of your yes. mind. that That's like telling a man he should uh, put up with not being able to urinate or not being able no, to no, breathe. No, no, no. But it wasn't like if I never did. I always did. I just, after a while, that's it. You get tired no more. That's it. What do you mean, after a while, you get tired no more? That's it. It's like everything. When you have too much chocolate, after a while, you don't want any more chocolate. So how much right? chocolate were you having? Uh, uh, plenty, plenty, and that's it. No how more. much? How much is plenty? No, that's more than enough. How much <laughs> is plenty? Listening, so that's more than enough. Oh Jesus! Christ. No wonder he cheated on you. I'd have cheated on you. And boy, to cheat on you and get you to pay for it, you're probably smarter than you and me both. Our email address, Tom, at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.